See, my goal is always to uh, always to start the show with like Will in a, like various stages of going to laugh, laughing, or or like after he's laughed. It's always the goal to say something. Just, just, how uncomfortable can we make him look? <laughs> it's like what was it's like? You know, I, I always want you got you the audience to to do, be guessing. What the hell did James say right before they went live? That's making Will make that face, or. In, in audio terms, what he did and said that made Will sound like that. Eels. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night, wherever you are in the world. Listening to us on your audio devices or watching us live as we speak here on the Twitch.tv. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And thank oh, you yeah. for the new follow, yeah. Huvian. Yeah. How the, you doing? That puts us at, do you know that puts us at 289? No, it's it away it's from 300. Are we doing anything for 300? I fucking played more Dark Souls 3. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Will, at this point, we've done so many different things. We have so many different, like, irons in the pots for, like, different. And Michael's hosting us. Thanks, Michael. Um, we have so many different things going on right now for, you know, Extra Life and so many things that we've promised Yeah, people. <laughs> So why 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 add more? Let, let's this is true. Let let's try and deliver on the shit that we've promised we'll deliver on before we before we start making more promises. That's my that's that's my goal is deliver on the shit that we've promised already. Including this, which is the podcast of the game will play itself. Hello, I am Lord Team Maker A.K. Will McKellar. Join me as always. It is James Atkinson. Good morning, everybody. So, what have we got to talk about today in our content up? Well, we've got a couple of things. We've got what we've been playing, which is going to be slightly different than normal, it seems. And also, the shout-outs and the pimp-outs. So, let's get right into it. Yes, 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 yes. Michael, uh, you, you will be happy. We have decided that Free Play Friday for the foreseeable future will be Dark Souls 3, the most dangerous game. Um, yes. If if other people want to get involved in it, we're more than happy to it. You just have to have the PC version of Dark Souls Three. Um, and obviously, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> so obviously, let us know because, like, you know, I I'm not going to be upset if I'm murdered. It's just like I'd rather be murdered by people I know, and that I know that are hunting me, versus people that don't. You know, it's just it's just that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, you'd, you'd like to know the people who are coming after you. So you can sort of run away and hide. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's that's the, that's the thing, right? It's it's not going to be a matter of me running and hiding. Um, the whole point of the series is that I don't know who's coming after me. Or I don't know when somebody's going to come, and I don't know if they're going to help or hurt me. That's the other thing. Like I don't know, and that's what's going to make it amazing. Well, you you'll be able to find out if people are going to help you because White the summon red. signs, the summon signs are gold. So there, so you'd have to summon them in to help you. Okay. Yeah, but like once so that's again, the I they they will and remember it, it's it's a perfect knowledge game. They know where I am. They know where I'm going. I don't know where they are. So if I get invaded by one of them. It's like, because they know where I am. They know where I'm going. Granted, I also don't know anything about the fucking game. Or where I'm going in the game. So, <clears throat> there's that too. And that's how you want it. Yes. <laughs> so. As we start our content dump today. Um, you told us a little bit about this last night. YouTube, they're changing themselves again. They're changing their algorithms. They're changing their policy, I guess. Yep. Yep. Uh, so basically, YouTube is saying, uh, YouTube is basically saying now that uh, they will be putting monetizable videos on all channels, whether you monetize your content or not, and whether you are a monetizable channel or not. Um, 
welcome to COVID. Welcome to mm -hmm. ad revenue being a problem for them. Which, I mean, first of all, we don't monetize our YouTube. We're not that big. We, we've yeah. talked about this multiple times. Like, our YouTube is essentially a dumping ground for our uh, our our videos, our streams. And yeah, it's, and it's our archive. It's our archive. And, and, with the D, and with DMCA being what it is now... It's it, it has to it's it's one of the few places where we actually can dump it. Yeah. Because the worst they'll do really for our sort of stuff is just mute the music and then we can just sort of mute it ourselves so we don't get caught with stuff that could be DMCA'd. Exactly. Which is fine. But I don't like the fact that again adverts gonna be put all over our fucking videos. Yep. I mean, that was the whole point of us not being monetized in the first place. It does suck. Um, but here's the kicker. Um, and now I don't normally, I don't normally condone this kind of behavior. But I will. Uh, if you want, you can... Um, you can use an ad blocker. Ooh. You can do that. Now it gets weird on Twitch. By the way, for those of you who have ad blockers and they're on Twitch, and you've been getting mid-roll ads on Twitch, that's because the way the Twitch ad system works now, and the ad blocker, where if you have it running, it gets it confuses with the Twitch algorithm thing, and that's how you get mid-roll ads. So, and also, let's be honest, you should you shouldn't be watching. You should be you shouldn't have an ad blocker on on Twitch. Watch the ads. It does help the people who do it. It does give them a bit of revenue. As shitty as they are, it helps them. Moving on from that, though, YouTube, once again, ads are, a prob ads are there because they need them. <laughs> Black is rock, but they don't work on Twitch, presumably because Twitch servers don't. Yeah, exactly that. And then when they do work, they, they conflict. Now, certain streamers like us, we rarely run. We have we have ads available. Like we have ads turned on because you have to. So we we do ours when you come in. We don't run any ads during the show. Hundred percent that way. We ran ads during the F one eight hour stream we did, but that's because I was getting up to take a piss and get a drink of water and trying to get feeling back in my legs. So I physically, we we physically weren't here doing anything while the ads were playing. Exactly. The channel might as well make some sort of money, but not from you guys. You know, you guys could just turn around for that minute and go, oh, look, there's a butterfly here. On the back. <laughs> in, in my yeah. mind, it was more like, I'm giving you something to watch that isn't just my chair sitting there by itself while you hear Jeff go, all right, so let's talk about the track here. You've got to stay calm through turn one. Got to watch turn six, because if you don't hold it, you go into the wall. <laughs> That's what you morning. hear. Morning. Good morning, everybody. Bono. Hello. Bono. <laughs> Bono, it's the coffee night, Bono. Don't I have this labeled as Chris? Is this the Chris image? <laughs> that is the Chris image. Why don't I have it labeled that? I definitely... uh. I definitely was sent a beautiful, uh, beautiful picture, which is now my profile picture on Discord, which uh, it's just a sign that says, I am not immune to the hurdy-gurdy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hurdy-gurdy is a wonderful instrument. Totally so off topic from whatever the hell was going on a moment before. Hurdy-gurdy is a wonderful instrument. It's a fascinating piece of history and technology. Merging together to create wonderful sounds that can be both both entrancing and beautiful and and smile inducing and also can make the hair on the back of your neck stand straight up. Which is completely oh, opposite to what YouTube's adverts do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I mean we we've had an idea about it. Um so if if you're listening, Carl, Stratham, please get in touch with us because we have an idea. 
about the YouTube stuff with the ads and the and the, uh, the claims that we get on on videos that we place on there. We would like a word if you would. Thank you. <laughs> That's all we'll say about that for the moment. So yes, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube videos getting ads, no matter whether you're part of the part of the program or not. It's just the adverts. Uh, well, the money will go to YouTube rather than the content creator. Lovely. Thank you. Um, but that's not all that happened this week. This week uh, in the UK, we finally got the big beastie. We got the other chonky boy that was coming out. The PlayStation 5, we finally got it. Except for people who had theirs nicked. Uh, by delivery drivers or packers who place things like toy, toy guns in their in their boxes, or packets of rice, or a um a oh what do you call them now um hobs portable hobs, and we call those people who do that cunts. Yeah, we we use similar linguistic uh, labeling over here in the U.S. for that type of person. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, there is no excuse for doing that to someone. You know, people paid their hard, hard-earned money. The initially, they probably had to save up a lot more to have some arsehole nick it on them. Because they went, oh, oh I want that. Oh, that yeah, that should be good. In between fucking scalpers as well. Mm-hmm. But I, w- I, was, I was fortunate enough to get one for a, an early Christmas present from Mum. So thank you very much, Mum. That was very kind of you Thank you. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about it, though, if I may. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also the uh, the difference between it and the Xbox and what I prefer, because I do have opinions. Um, the thing is fucking huge. That's, that's the first thing. It almost does take up an entire shelf of my TV unit, whereas the Xbox uh, Series X only takes up about half. So there is a big size difference there. Um, the design, I mean, the design looks cool. I'll be honest with you there. It doesn't look an ugly thing. However, with the design comes problems. Like, for example, with the disc version of the PlayStation 5, it's a bit of an awkward bugger to put the discs in. Because you can't, if you're looking at it straight on, head on, fair enough, you can see it. But if you're looking at it from, from above can't see where the disc goes probably so you have to sort of feel your way in there whereas compared to the xbox you can see it's it's nicely designed so i think design wise the xbox is better to use a disc with um storage storage on the uh the playstation 5 compared to the xbox they still are using the playstation 4 standard of hard, external hard drive of eight terabytes as a maximum. So yeah, my twelve terabyte is sitting in there while the, the PlayStation is going. I can see it's a twelve terabyte, but I can't use it. I'm sorry. Whereas the Xbox is very happy to have a huge hard drive sitting in it. It will sit there and go, "Hi, do you want me to swap between? Well, you know, which games are better run on which for you? Yeah." Yeah, I'll do that. No problem. I'd like to please you. Please let me help, yeah. sir. <laughs> sir, please give me the games. Let me play. Let me you. Let, let me play the games for you while you play them, sir. Um, <laughs> would you like to play some more? Again, so that one, the Xbox wins. The controller, the the uh, new PlayStation DualSense controller, now. I like this thing. Oh. This this thing, when the devs are using it to its fullest. Now, the Astro's Playroom is the tech demo for this, and it shows off the bells and whistles for it. And it feels, the control almost feels like it's spring-loaded when we know it's not. Right. Which is a nice little touch to it. Um, the haptic triggers... When there's a little bit of resistance on there, it's not huge resistance. So once you press in properly, you give it a little firm push, it will, you know, it will go fully in. Um, but, but yeah, 
Well, there's uh, certain moments on climbing during one of the uh, sections in Astro's Playroom where, and I'll, I'll, show, I'll try to show you this, I'll try to show you this a little bit more, but when you press in, uh, if you press slightly, mm -hmm. then you can hold it on without breaking the ledge. So I have a feeling if they're going to do things like Uncharted, then they're going to use this to an advantage because it depends how much you grip on the stone whether it falls away completely or stays there until you can get by, which is a rather nice touch. You can hear in the microphone and the, the speaker bit, whether you're on metal, a little dinking as your, your little feet run across metal, or you're going through water, you can hear that better. It's, it's a rather nice piece of kit, I have to say. Really is a nice piece of kit, the controller. The UI on the PlayStation, however, looks nice, functions like a bag of shit. <laughs> it really does. Honestly, PlayStation 4 compared to PlayStation 5, right? If you wanted to look for trophies, press the PlayStation button, move up, move across a couple of bits, PlayStation trophies are right there. That's not how this works this time. You want to see trophies, you have to press the PlayStation button, you have to move across to your profile, then move down to trophies, and then there they are. Turning the thing off, you have to go into a game menu. Again, press the PlayStation button while you're on the game's little sort of cards. Then move down to the power option. It's not there as a couple of uh, presses of button on your control pad anymore. They've moved shit around. It is... Yeah, I, I don't... I like the theory behind doing this stuff, but fuck me, have they changed it to, to stupid degrees. So, in terms of... If they actually put the games in the controller with the Xbox, that would be a monster. That would be an absolute monster of a console. But as it is... I have to say, I mean, while I am playing more games on the PlayStation 5, overall, I actually prefer the Xbox, the way it's set up. And you also have the, the you also haven't been playing the best game on the Xbox right now. Yes, yes, I, ha I have played a little bit of uh, Like a Dragon. Mm, so good. Which I, I, do need to, I need, do need to play some more of it, but... Again, this is the draw about the PlayStation. The games on them are fun because I've been playing um, Astro's Playroom and, um, and I've been playing some of Sackboy, A Big Adventure, and they just a joy to play. So there's, there's the balance, there's the counterbalance. The games on the PlayStation so far, if you take away Like a Dragon, top, <laughs> you know. Know, they they they're the ones rolling the roost. So it's a real mixed bag of feelings for the consoles. Now, who even brought up an interesting thing? The iterations that need the uh, the iterations that need improvement. Then, mm -hmm. now, if I'm not mistaken, um, <laughs> didn't the PlayStation three and four also like partway through their their lifespans have like a change have a change in like how the home screen looked and worked? Um, not hugely, not where I did the home screen worked, but like had like a more, like they made a more, made it, in other words, like they could take something like that and then like kind of make that adjustment Yeah, in like a, in like in, a couple in, months. Yeah, they, they, they could do something like that, like um, add a, an icon here, change an icon there. Because there wasn't a huge amount of change to it. The only company that really did that was... Microsoft, because the UI now that you get on the Xbox Ones when you buy them is the same as the Series X, because it makes the transition so much easier. Different companies, different different design philosophies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe because it's just new, 
it just may take a little bit. You see, now the thing is, everybody, I'm trying to make an argument here with Will. I'm trying to understand it. Number one, I don't own either of these two consoles. I don't plan on buying one anytime too. Number two, he started talking about trophies, and then I immediately kind of started drifting off into right field. It's because I appreciate that Will hunts trophies, but that's not what I play games for. And it's just like he started talking about finding trophies, and my brain just started going, maybe I can fix this issue. And I finally, I finally fixed the problem. It's been bugging me for years. But I finally fixed a problem while you were talking, Will. So thank you for that. Thank yeah. you for giving me <laughs> thank you for giving me the time to figure out exactly what was happening. And now, god damn it, it's still doing it. <clears throat> so you didn't fix it. I didn't fix it. It was working fine, and now it wasn't. I I thought I figured out what program was making my microphone lose volume. <laughs> and I thought I fixed it. And then I didn't. So Back yeah, to, my headset started to do that. Yeah. Started to lose volume on it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a Windows thing. Because uh, I, I I sort of just did the like, like, volume control here, and that seems to sort it. But it's like, yeah, I'm just kind of. Hmm. Um, I mean, overall, there are teething troubles with the consoles. That always happens. Now, it doesn't seem to be a huge problem with everybody. But it's stuff to keep an eye on, like, don't put it in rest mode at the moment, because that can screw it up. Mm. We've had that before in the PlayStation 4. Um, so it's, it's sort of little niggles like that. But, I mean, overall, don't get me wrong, I am happy with both the consoles. It Good. just infuriates me what they've done <laughs> with some of it to make it not as streamlined, I guess, not as ease of use for people. Because, you know us, we just want to turn something on and just play a game. Mm -hmm. If we've seen something like talking to people or, you know, seeing how well we're doing, I don't want to faff, have to faff around with four or five menus. just want to go, boom, boom. Oh, look, there you go. And clap your hands twice. <laughs> play a game. So, load the game. Xbox, play a game. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> hey, Xbox. We load the game for us. Thanks. Can you order me some Tostinos pizza rolls? I want some Tostinos pizza rolls. Can you help me put my pants on? Thanks. Live to win till you die. <laughs> Live to win. But there, there, there was also user error as well for the um, setting up the PlayStation ah, to yes. record capt capturing game footage. That was kind of my fault with not turning off the HDCP. The good old Pepcat error. Yep. <laughs> Chris knows That's what I'm talking what about with that one. Mm-hmm. 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 But yeah, I would say if you like the uh backwards compatible thing, you if you have a huge backlog of games for your Xbox, definitely get the Xbox Series X. They they just play better. And then we started to do some more from the back from you know the back catalogue. Because now they, they've got that out the door and, and manufacturing that. They can go back to doing some more of them that we are after. So we may get some more classics at last. <laughs> yeah, picnic error. <laughs> Problem in chair, not in computer. Yeah, I'd say that. Um, yeah. But the next generation's here. Enjoy. See, Pepcat error is very much similar to that. His problem exists between keyboard and chair. Yeah, just don't uh, O F for it. Yeah, that's one way to deal with the problem. <laughs> yeah. So, shall we move on to what we have been playing? Sure. Chris, okay. would you like to go first? Should I tell you that as a maybe? <laughs> okay, fine. Okay. Um, 
So, I have been playing. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I've been playing Minecraft Mondays with, uh, you know, your boys, uh, Cosmic Gamers and uh, Recon Prism. Good lads. You should check them out. And uh, throughout the course of the rest of the week, I've been doing basically Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, yeah. Tuesday, Thursday, and most Saturday, Sundays. I've been playing some Space Haven, where we're slowly making some progress. Slowly making some surviving happening. And for people who like games like RimWorld, games like Oxygen Not Included, this is a very good game for that type of playstyle. It is a little more different. Um, getting more people is a lot more difficult because you have to just find people. Or I think you can kidnap people, but I really haven't tried to challenge any other ships so far, so I haven't taken that risk yet. I don't know how feasible that is. But it takes some build-up. It takes some time to get there. And, uh, you know, I've been playing a little bit more, uh, more of the old League of Legends, uh, Runked Arena. And, you know, the game is, the game's borked right now. It's, it's a little broken. They just recently redid all of the items in it. So it's a, it's a little imbalanced by a little, I mean, incredibly. So. That's all I've been playing. Okie dokie. Do you want to go next, James? I think I can. Uh, <clears throat> Hi, everybody. My name is James. I uh, I uh, been playing a few games. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is slowly becoming a must play for me, uh, because it is Yakuza with JRPG elements, and oh my god, it's fun. The story is great. It has that wonderful blend of seriousness and comedy that you've come to come to Yakuza games. But at the same time, and I was listening to somebody who's been playing this and they said it exactly right. The Yakuza games are great. And they're very, in a sense, and Will can agree with me on this, they're wholesome because Kiryu is a bro. Like, he is as good, he's a, he's a, he's a, st stern tough exterior guy but like ultimately he cares about his people he cares about the people around him and he and he does everything he can for him but he's very much a lone wolf and yeah. pretty much all the stories like besides some zero which where it's like one of the few games where you play there are a couple games where you don't play as cute to you all the way through but you know there, there's very much kind of this feeling of cute as a lone wolf and he deals with from that the fact that there's a group of people where I am, I have three party members now. And, like, you start to see them kind of, like, go from being, like, we're working together to, like, becoming friends. And they start, like, talking about things. And, like, there's these wonderful little moments where, like, you'll be, like, walking down the street. And, like, this little screen will come up on the left-hand side as this conversation. You click it. And then they'll just start talking about, like, random shit. Of like you walk by, he goes, "Oh yeah, I remember that one time I busted a guy there." And they go, "Oh yeah, how did it go?" Ah, oh, I let him go because of X Y Z. Man, you're really a nice guy, her. Nah, nah, nah. He was just a kid. And then you go and you find out later on that like, you know, this kid that he talked to, who he found out that like that you know he arrested his father on a murder charge, but he didn't murder him, and he talked to the kid, and he didn't and he didn't believe the kid at first, so the that the father was on his way to get, you know, go to jail. But then he believed them after talking to him for a second time. But at that point, a corrupt police commissioner who didn't want his, like, who already got promoted to a new job, didn't want a black stain on it, basically, like, witness interrogated the guy into just not recanting his story and, like, shoved it all under the rug. And, like, that guy then killed himself in prison. And you're like, oh, God, this sucks. But then they go to the next step further that that kid is now, like, an adult and has been, like, trying to pass the bar and go to law school and that cop who got now kicked off the force has been like using his pension money who he said he drank away playing with like gambling booze and girls to actually fund this kid's law school and you're like the fuck yakuza 
<laughs> I didn't think I was gonna cry today, but here we are. Yeah, like, here I, here I am. And they have these things called, and they're called bar story. They're called drink stories. So like, you have a bond level with your, you know, the more when they're in your party for a period of time, or you have conversations, or you do things with them, like you go gambling, or you can like go watch old movies, which then has a mini game with you, like at the level of Catherine. Where there's like sheeps that go Mer! and like you have to like do button mashing combos to make sheep go away. It's it's yakuza, all right, people. I'm trying to explain things, but it's just fucking yakuza. <laughs> you increase their bond level, and then you go to this bar that you frequent. It's basically your home base. And the bartender, by the way, voiced by David Hayter, mm-hmm. it's a snake. Um, and then like you have like these intimate one-on-one conversations with them, and it's just. Like you're sitting, and you you grow to like like these people, and you see just over time, like they gel together and they become like a group of really tight, close knit friends. And once again, Kyuryu, amazing character, has a good tight group new group of friends, but they're like usually seen in cutscenes and stuff. Where like these ones, you you're experiencing like a sixty hour JRPG with all of them, and I'm coming attached to them. Also, one of them has hobo magic. I mean, it's it's hobo magic. He has a resurrection spell, <laughs> like your character's dead, and he goes, "I'll save you." And he, because he's a former nurse, he goes to give you CPR. And so, like, he, you see him do the chest compressions, and then like lean back, and he goes, opens his mouth to go like lay down to like give you breath, and you just see all the stank come out of his mouth because he's a hobo. <laughs> and then they smell it, and he goes, "Oh God!" And the person gets up, he goes, "Oh, you're okay. No CPR needed." And then you know, the player, the, the character's like, "No." Thanks. <laughs> he gets revived. It's just like that is truly hobo magic. Fucking Yuki's. Oh no, the best hobo magic one is called es- Essence of Pigeon Storm, where um he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a bunch of seeds and throws it at the enemy, and then a storm mm-hmm. of pigeons just come and just like birds him to death. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm like. <laughs> Game of the year. Um, 10 out of 10. I went, the best weapons I can have right now are from a sex shop. Um, <laughs> so I have a pink baton. Um, this is a baton, a police, a police baton from, of dubious origin. It was meant to be used by the police. We don't know how it ended up here is the item description. <laughs> <laughs> the other one okay. is a gigantic. They say, Oh, it's a gigantic back massager. But if anybody has seen a back massager that has looked like this, it's long and white, and then it has like if you've seen an Una's Honest video, it's what they use to scramble the eggs. The 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 wand. The wand. Is it is the mm-hmm. wand. It, it, it it's Google it. If you're over eighteen, Google it. It's a basically full size version one of those that the character then uses <laughs> as a baseball bat to beat his enemies with. Mind you, hitting people with it can paralyze them because it vibrates. <laughs> Not making this shit. I wish I, I. You can't make this stuff up. So yes, I fought and and I fought last night. I fought a boss, <laughs> a yakuza boss, <laughs> with pigeon hobo magic, and a gigantic vibrator. <laughs> If that hasn't sold you on the game yet, I don't know what else I can do for you. <clears throat> really. Really. So, y- Yakuza, like a dragon. If you like Yakuza games, if you like JRPGs. By the way, it's got a pretty in-depth JRPG-like system. Um, It has a Suji Dex, which is where you have to go around and collect all the enemy types in the game. And right. what's helpful about it is, is that... You can't access it during battle, but outside of battle, it lets you know all of the uh, all of the weaknesses of any enemies you faced. There is a dungeon you can go through at one point, which is the sewers of the city. There is a battle arena that you can go through that you can get higher level weapons and equipment at. There is kart racing. There is mahjong. There is gambling. There is slot machines. There is a business simulator mini game that helps you earn money there is i'm and i'm forgetting half of what they led to there's the drinking thing um there's a there's a special mechanic in it where if your character goes and they get you can get drunk 
And now if the characters get drunk, they do more damage. But if they get too drunk, they get confused in battle and can end up attacking their allies. Yeah. There's a can collecting mini game where you can drive around a bike and collect cans against other hobos to try and earn money. It's just it's it's great. I really like the amount of thought that has gone into this game is I can't I can't imagine. Um, also, there's weapon crafting and upgrading. So, like the base weapons you get for every character class um, can be upgraded to like super epic level weapons. Also, there are multiple jobs. So you have your characters that have their main jobs, but then it can go into like different jobs, and those jobs get unlocked when their bonds reach high enough levels. So, like one of the characters, he's a hobo, but then could also be a magi a, mag a magician. Or sorry, a musician, a fortune teller, a chef, a bodyguard, a hitman. Some of the female characters can be hostesses, idols, S and M dominatrixes, and with costumes to boot. So, Yakuza like a dragon. Get it. Other things I've been playing. Uh, uh Football Manager twenty twenty one. I have successfully added in all of the logos and face packs. So that is ready to go when it fully releases. Um, you know, I only I had to download uTorrent to torrent the face pack for the game. The face pack for this game. You're wondering, like, oh, James, Football Manager, how much space does it take up in your hard drive? Football Manager takes up about, like, 5 gigs. The face pack for the game takes up about 20. What the hell? Because it has face packs for every single person that they can in every country around the world. And then the logo packs, so all the logos are correct. So we're ready to go on that. That's when when I was watching one of Chris's Space Haven streams, I was doing that because I was like, I don't get, get, can't run game right now, so watch Chris. And um, a few other quick ones I'll run through: uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's Assassin's Creed. It's kind of a nice. It's it's a it's a open world Assassin's Creed game where like. You can actually not go anywhere and do anything, and you're not like have to be like you are the chosen Altair thing. It's nice. Um, Dark Souls Three. <laughs> he found Puppy. <laughs> Is he the first boss or the second boss? He's the second boss. Okay. You've already faced the first boss, the one where you pulled a sword out of him. I didn't wanna. Now, Puppy <laughs> looks like he's going to be a bitch, so. Uh, I think Chris agrees with us once you get the hang of it. It's quite easy. Yeah, but what I'll, so what I'll do in the meantime is I may be, go off stream and try and beat Puppy or try and beat him before Friday so that invades can start happening. Because, you know, we're going to keep the most dangerous game going. And then finally, yeah. finally, the last thing I've been playing, Mars Horizon. Okay. Okay. So Mars Horizon is a game where you take control of one of the five space agencies, either the ESA, China, Japan, United States, or Russia. It starts in the 1960. And the goal is to have a colony on Mars. And you basically go through the months developing rockets, science, doing research, and then launching rockets and doing the various different things. It's like Kerbal Space Program, except you don't need an engineering degree to launch the rockets. Um, okay. <laughs> and what's also nice about it, too, is that, like, there's kind of interesting mini games. Like, once you get, like, your satellites, your stuff in space, then at that point, like, you know, you have, like, four different resources and, like, you can exchange energy for, like, those resources, and then you have to have a minimum level to pass it, and then a higher bar level to get, like, a bonus of either research or likes that help give you more funding. And right. then that kind of stuff. And and, and there's and it happens in multiple stages. So, like, for me, I have – I'm in 1975. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing for the moon landing. I've already orbited the moon. I've already orbited Mars. Uh, with a with a thing, I can send things out. I've launched commercial satellites. 
uh, a lot of the other agencies are going to the inner planets. So like they're orbiting Venus or impacting Venus or impacting or orbiting Mercury. Um, but I'm focusing on the on the outer planets. So I'm like going to Ju Jupiter. I'm going to Pluto. I'm like orbiting Mars. I'm about to do the first moon landing. So it's, yeah. it's kind of like that. Kind of, so you're racing against the other agencies. Because if you do the thing first, you get more, more from it. Because like oh, you were the first person to have a manned mission to, to orbit the Earth, and yeah, it's a, it's a very fun kind of interesting game. Like I said, it's it's Kerbal Space Program without like having direct control of the rockets. Um, mm -hmm. It's like twenty bucks, and it's it's really kind of cool. Um, it has some replayability value too. Because each each space agency has a different kind of, you know, like bonus, or you can like choose like NASA United States, but then say I want to create my own agency, and it gives you a huge list of like pros and cons that you can take to make the agency feel like your own. Like you know, like astronauts are cheaper, but it's more expensive to build rockets and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um. It's kind of fun. It's it's a it's a it's a very and it's all turn based. So it's like you know next month, next month. Um, so it's it you can kind of jump in, play for like five or ten minutes, and then like save the game and jump out. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Mars Horizon, if you like that kind of game. I think it's also on Xbox and PlayStation. I don't know if it's on Game Pass, though. Let's have a quick look, see if it's on PlayStation. I believe I've seen it. Let's have a look. Mars uh, Horizon. Uh, yep, it's there. there you go. It is there. I think it came out this week, I believe. It did come out this week. It came out earlier this week. Yeah. So there you go, it is on the PlayStation 4. So yeah, it's a game we all can play, guys. It's on every console. I'm not being a PC elitist here. <clears throat> to talk about my weird, crazy space indie games. Also, yes, I will let everybody know. Yes, there will be a tick with there will be a football manager save. It's coming in January. It will be Corby. Nice. I don't know what nice. I'm going to call it, though. I have to figure so out some funny, a funny alliteration for it. <laughs> Countdown to Corby. Did you did you find Corby in Valhalla? I probably have been there. I, I, I've unlocked all of Led, uh, Led of Teshtasire. <laughs> That's what it's called. Nice. <laughs> it's like, welcome to Led of Teshtasire. Oxfordshire. It's like London. It's not London, is it? London. London. For Londinians. Londinians. <laughs> I'm Eivor the Viking. Well, do you, you hear about how people are upset? There's a there's certain religious groups that are upset with Assassin's Creed Valhalla because you sack monasteries for goods. And, um, yeah, this week on mispronounced names. Oh, don't get me started, Huvian. You want me to mispronounce things. Do you want me to, mispronounce... Do you want me to mispronounce things and butcher your accents at the same time? Because I'll oh, God, do no. that. <laughs> Please, God, no. <laughs> started, can I give you a list? Of th There's a list of grievances. Please do. <laughs> a dollar to extra life for everyone. I, mean, I can tell you that half of them are probably intentional. The other half aren't intentional. But if you tell me what they are, they will. Have been, I will tell you they were intentional, because that's the kind of person I am. It is Lundin in it. Oh, but you know where you can go to, and I need to go there at some point in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Where's that? Yorkshire. Yes. So I can go get <laughs> my tea. <laughs> Yorkshire tea gold. <laughs> Need to go sack Yorkshire for tea. <laughs> but it's not spelled like Yorkshire. It's like J-O-K-R. Yeah. 
his Yorkshire. Yeah. The, the olden times, right, is spelling it. The most common British names are... <laughs> Wait for you to say it before I do. Uh, Towshire is going to be wrong. I know that for him. Yeah, because that's there's, Toaster. It's Toaster. There's Worcestershire. Mm. Mm-hmm. And lo, uh, was it Lohabrohan? Lo, 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 Lohabrohan? Lohabrohan? Oh. No. Lufbra. Lufbra. Yeah, Lufbra. That is not Lufbra. <laughs> that is. I think I got Worcestershire right. You got Worcestershire, yeah. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Worcestershire is, is, is the closest. Sure, and sure. Toaster. I mean, like it's it's at the end. That that can be like that that that's we're not nitpicking sure or shire at the end. No. Or you could just ask somebody from Millwall. We uh, they'll just be like, "Hey, fuck you," because they're drunk all the time in Millwall. They're not screaming, "Fuck you, Millwall!" <laughs> at me, Millwall. I'm not wrong. You know it. You're, you know that. Please at Dougie the Reverse for Gamer. <laughs> I have, we, have, we have news proof. Remember, remember that horrible stabbing where like the guy got stabbed by the um, like that that person who had issues like where they're at a convention center like for like job searching for um, convicts and that one guy like took like the narwhal like thing and stabbed a bunch of people with it then ran out on the bridge and then he was tackled right. by two citizens who helped. Who like then like beat the crap out of him, and then the cops came and got him. Right. So, the two citizens who tackled the guy, who were brave enough to tackle this guy brandishing a narwhal thing from guess Mill what? Millwall, because <laughs> of course, because <laughs> they are crazy. So, is that Comely? Yeah, that sounded like it's a pronunciation to me. No, that's the <laughs> one that she asked. Hmm. It's commonly, right? You don't pronounce the D. By the way, if any of you puts that freaking Welsh city... Oh, God, yeah. It's not happening. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> or, you, or, you know, you have to clear your throat for towards the end of it. I've got go. <laughs> so is that all you've been playing matey yes it says we're playing let's have james name cities in in your in england <laughs> sorry united kingdom united yes. kingdom because i i imagine you can probably you know there, there's wales there's cornwall technically its own place i've played crusader kings <clears throat> scotland Northern yep. <laughs> Ireland. Technically five countries. Yep. Republic, no. No, no. That's not part of it. No. I said, I said Northern Ireland. Yeah, I know. Republic. <laughs> I Just before there. anyone jumped in, went Republic, no, no, no. no, so, no, no. so remember, there, there, there's, about that? there's England, there's the United Kingdom, there's the Isles, and then there's the Commonwealth. There are different levels here. Republic of Ireland and the Isles of England, yes. Re- Republic of England, a Republic of Ireland, not in the United Kingdom. No, no, no. <laughs> Repu- <laughs> Republic of Ireland in the Commonwealth, yes. <laughs> I know my English geography. <laughs> so, let me uh, go through what I've been playing. Uh, that is, let us let see. So, I have played both the two awesome peas this week, and I've completed them both, and I've been infuriated by both. Uh, they are like platforming, side scrolling uh, games, a bit like Super Meat Boy. They have a green, a, a green tinge to them, so a Game Boy aesthetic in an 8 bit kind of thing. Oh, very infuriating, but, you know, once you get by them, they're actually a lot quicker than you think. There's just, like, four or five levels that will just make you swear quite a lot. Um, So I've done that. I have played some Snooker 19, uh, quarterfinals of the Masters, and it 
was a tough match and I lost another quarterfinal. So my my trophy cabinet is starting to look a bit bare now, considering I've not won anything since the uh, the difficulty upgrade. I played a little bit of Like a Dragon, um, maybe about, what, a little bit of a chapter, so I can't really say too much about it yet. Same as Forza 7, I've completed the main championships and it opened up a bit more in the other championships already completed, so <sighs> got a bit more racing to do on that, including some endurance racing, which is uh, going to be a good few hours' work. Uh, I played Four Guys with Geo, Kimmy, and Letitia on Thursday, in between it fucking about and not letting us play at all, uh, which I won another match. I've now won three matches in total. It was like, we played the first one straight in, just like, you know, Full Mountain. Because uh, I was looking around in Full Mountain, and I was like, there's not many people around here. I can win this. Uh, but I wasn't trying to get in my head that I was going to, otherwise mistakes start happening. And next I heard was Geo, Geo at the side was going, you better win this, you better win this. Jump up for the crown. It lags in about a few seconds. I'm, oh, come on, I've got this. Game over. I win. So he's like, yes. Fair enough. Um, and Tish won two matches as well. So she's doing very well for herself. Uh, I've also went then played the single greatest game ever. Well, it's sequel. I completed it today. I platinumed it today. It is, of course, I'm talking about My Name is Mayo 2. Yes, more clicking of a jar. More a jar in fancy costumes. And a jar in different scenarios. Yes, it was uh, it a jar pretend to be a flappy bird. The jar side-scrolling on a platform where you have to jump over thoughts like my ex. And that fart smelled. Uh, that fart turned into a sneeze. The, this sort of random shit, but it is the greatest ever. And bless you, by the way, if you want to sneeze. <laughs> that's, that's the name of a city. It's the name of an actual city in New York. Um, and then finally, I was on uh, the PlayStation 5 playing Sa uh, Sackboy Big Adventure, which Sumo Digital, since I've taken the IP from Media Molecule, while keeping to the aesthetic of Media Molecule, have made that their own into a charming adventure. And it feels really nice. It's a nice game to, you know, a 3D platformer like I would say up there with Mario, with Super Lucky's Tail. Maybe even a bit better than Super Lucky's Tail. So I'm, I'm having fun playing that. And uh, I played. The tech demo that is Astro Playroom, where you play as little bots with loads of Easter eggs. And as a tech demo, that's such a love letter to everybody who enjoys PlayStation. There's so many, um, so many Easter eggs there for you to just go. Oh, I know that game. Oh, that's from that. Oh, that's from that. Oh, that's from that. Oh, that's from that. It's amazing, amazing. So that, that that's pretty much what I played this week. Um, for everybody who's wondering, how do you say that city? It's Schenectady, Schenectady, New York. Oh, <laughs> so um, I think we're on now to shout out some pimp outs. While I just go turn on my light, I'll be back in a second. Yeah. Okay. And Huvian, it's not pronounced Arkansas. It's Arkansas. <laughs> Because you gotta talk like you're down from the south down there, so you gotta go down there in Arkansas, where uh, where the dentists, where Mountain Dew in every cup, and the dentist just gave up there and down there in Arkansas. Well, I'm back, man. Oh, who's got pin pads and shout outs? So, um, uh, <laughs> we'd like to thank you all very much for uh, joining us here on the show today. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to thank Mook for being awesome. Wonderful stream that Mook had. I'd also like to thank Bud Light, because <clears throat> mm, tasty Bud Light. 
Uh, yeah, let's stop that. <laughs> While we're thinking, people. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for playing Name That City with us. Watch James mispronounce words. <laughs> words and things and uh yeah words and things and so the worst part is about all that as you know my best friend's mother was an in medieval english literature teacher you figured i would have picked something up oh jeez <laughs> just remember they thy them them thars it's just a lot of backwards talk yes but thank you all for being here we really do appreciate it thank you all yes to all of you guys who showed up yesterday for more for Dark Souls for Free Play Friday, um, we didn't expect that. Uh, it was a hell of a fun time. I hope all of you are staying safe. Next week, um, as a shout out, if we don't talk to you before then, because I know I may not, and some of you may not, but for those of you celebrating Thanksgiving next week, um, stay safe. Um, if you can't be with the loved ones, try and reach out to them. If you can be with your loved ones, be safe. Protect yourself. Protect them in any way you can. Um, also, watch out for Black Friday. Really, I would suggest buying things online. I really would suggest it. Because um, no matter what they tell you, that TV is not worth COVID in any way, shape, or form. But stay safe. Maybe if you got some free time and you're going to Grandma's house... To you need a couple hours to kill. We've got a great backlog of podcasts for you. You can watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that you can listen to. Uh, might might I suggest a few of them? Episode fifty of season one is a real knee slapper, and a good three hours. So that'll kill some time in the car. Um, also, various YouTube things. Will's F one series on YouTube is a wonderful watch. Also helps kill some time. Uh, my Yakuza series is on YouTube. You know, it, we wait till the end to pimp all this stuff out. Chris's VODs on his on It's the Coffee Night. You can watch those. Because mm -hmm. you can also watch GM's uh, Fallout Four Episode One. Yes, which is the new Volunteer Forge. I don't know how many views it's gotten yet today. But uh, last I I saw was seventy three in total. Oh, good. Let's see if there's more since we've been talking. Nope, seventy three. We're we're stuck at seventy three at the moment. Ah, the algorithm has finally started to slow down. A shame, <laughs> but yeah, it's all there. Formula One, Crash Bandicoot, uh, awesome P. Charity stuff, Yakuza. Really, watch it all. Yeah, really anything you could want. We we probably have a video that's about a game that you would want to play or played or going to play. Mm -hmm. So we really would say, and if, and if not, find something you would like to watch and play and enjoy that. Um, it's the holidays. Enjoy the sport. Premier League's back today. I wouldn't be watching Tottenham in an hour. Happy about that. Um, F1 is next weekend. Uh, watch Hamilton. It's 24th, right? Mm -hmm. 27th. Sorry, it's the 27th this race. So. Uh, yeah, 27th. it's going to be 27th to the 29th. It's going to be Bahrain. Uh, yeah, uh, well, we're doing F1 tomorrow yep. for the finale. We are victory indeed. lap, as, I, as I'm now calling it. It's the victory lap. <laughs> Yeah, because I can't win. I could only draw level. Now, I could just bin it and just make it a draw. Because then in a couple of weeks down the line, it's going to be us two live, head to head. Mm hmm So. Head to head. Mm hmm Head to head. Probably play racing in the same car for the same team. Yes. That way we have the same thing at the same difficulty level. But against AI component opponents, AI components, AI components and opponents, both involved. So everybody, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your time. If you're taking time off, spending with family, good. Uh, if not, reach out. Call your mom. She hasn't heard from you in a while. 
It would be nice to catch up with her. She would really appreciate it. Or your dad, or your dad's, or your mom's, or the person that raised you, if they don't identify as either one of those things. But reach out to them, because it's important this time of year. And uh, yeah, we love you. Uh, we're going to send you over to our PR department. Uh, so any hate mail can now be sent over to uh, Dougie at the Reverse Pro Gamer. You can air your grievances with him right now, um, as per usual. And uh, cross your fingers and hope that Cyberpunk comes out in December. So we're raiding. Everybody say hi to Dougie. Hopefully it's in an awkward, awkward spot because we love to do that. Uh, I've been James. That's been Will at Lord Team Maker. It's Chris, also known as It's the Coffee Night. And hey, this has been the Tig Whippies podcast. We love you. Go get some coffee. Okay. Bye bye.